Welcome to Attican Plays, Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to part 14 of our second playthrough of Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. Now, I've been busy kind of uh, cleaning up some stuff. Uh, I'm not delighted by the uh, rail system yet. Um, the increased functionality has helped a bit, and so I wanted to kind of take advantage of that a little bit and clean a couple things up. So I double-tracked the line here that basically brings stuff from our depot, which is way out in there because, you know, oil fields, into the system. And it kind of cleaned all this up so that we had cleaner merges, and, we, and I'm treating this whole area through here as one block over to here and all this area is one block actually in fact I'm treating all this from here way over here as one block so there can only be one train in there at a time and given the current state of the signals that's I think that a clean block like that is the best way to do complex lines because if you're going to try to do complex lines and cram extra signals in here you will eventually choke I promise you it will fail so got that going and I've been playing with the board industry a little bit and I wanted to do something to kind of illustrate something for you uh, a lot of you wrote back that you can plant your own trees so I went out and planted a whole bunch of trees I didn't know if it mattered what kind you planted but uh, you know I didn't put these uh, you know, I put these, uh, what are these, sprice or po spruce or poplar, poplar, or let's see, what are they? Poplar. So we've got a bunch of poplar trees, and they grow up pretty quickly, really, much quicker than being realistic, of course. And the good news is that uh, this latest version does have a brush, so when you want to, like, plant trees, you can kind of just hold it down like this. See, it'll plant. You don't have to do each individual tree. I can't, I can't even imagine doing each individual tree. Cannot possibly. Oh, I wouldn't do it. Oh, my God. Anyway, um, I was able to paint this. It reminded me so much of that one transport fever uh, mission where you're uh, doing the Suez Canal. I, I, just, uh, I was having flashbacks to that. But um, even that, to me, I think an opportunity here is to give us a button that says auto plant. And then have a, you can have a charge, you know, in so many rubles or so many dollars to auto plant the, uh, the forest. And, you know, kind of, as you cut, if you cut a tree down, you plant a new tree. Uh, you know, that's sort of the warehouser approach. Um, for those of you unfamiliar, that's an American company that does a lot of forestry. And they, whenever they cut down trees, they plant replacements. So, um, <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, I, I, I wanted to do, I wanted to make more out of the sawmill. See, again, the current production is zero again. It says it's missing wood. So this is not enough. We would need multiple wood cutting posts to keep this thing going. It says there's over 5,000 tons of wood in the forest. So I'm thinking it's counting all of this, although it appears to only be using what's out here. But we'll see about that. But um, what I wanted to do is just kind of illustrate the, the import price and how important it is to have that import near the border. So <clears throat> here we have, I have a train set up right here. And this train starts here and does both a load and an unload. And you'll notice it's loads until it's full, boards, and it unloads until it's completely unloaded, wood. So what it's doing now is, uh, say, imagine it loads up a bunch of boards. It goes up its route, like so. Notice that's new, but we'll come back to that. It goes to Car de Bog and sells off all the boards, comes back and stops here. And I've got an import set right here. So I've got a storage set right here that's importing wood. So it's full of wood that it has been importing. I just noticed it didn't have a power supply, but it doesn't seem to matter. Uh, with a delivery price of five uh, rubles per ton. But if we go down here, and let's say we were going to try to import uh, wood directly into uh, our sawmill, which would make sense, keep your sawmill busy. It's 15 rubles a ton, so that's a 10 ruble per ton difference in the price by just moving inland this little bit. It caught, they charge us an extra 10 rubles per ton for delivery charge. So we can save that money by having our train 
After it drops off here, it stops here, loads up with this uh, imported wood, takes that wood down here, and unloads it, and then I have a bunch of trucks set up to take that wood and run it into the sawmill. I can, and if I was doing it again, I'd be able to design this a little better, but uh, as, as it is, this is what I came up with. Uh, unload your wood here, trucks take it into the sawmill, sawmill turns it into boards, boards get loaded back into the train. So this train, over time you'll notice it's kind of just pulled in, it's just started unloading its wood. So it'll keep unloading wood into that um, storage, and our trucks will keep uh, grabbing that wood and taking it back to the sawmill so that we're using it. We're about to see a, I think we're going to see a truck pass somebody here, maybe? Yeah, that truck actually passed that uh, logging uh, logger truck, which is very slow. There's another truck passing. So now we are creating more. Uh, we've actually maxed out. So we, we've, uh, we've maxed out all of our storage. So that's, again, this is where this is wrong. I should have a bigger storage here and a bigger storage here. It would be much better. But anyway, now you'll notice this thing is starting to take on boards because it has finished unloading its wood and now what we'll get is a loop where the sawmill will be able to continually work most of the time and we'll be able to create boards and the train will take the boards and load up till it's full of boards we'll slowly deplete this supply and then we'll make a little money on it a tiny profit because we've got a short a slow um, slight import cost you know, low delivery fee. If we had the higher delivery fee, by the way, this would be a losing proposition. We would not do this at all. And then any wood that comes from our wood cutting post and gets contributed into the sawmill is actually a bonus because this didn't have any import costs at all. So we'll make a little money on that. So we've got a board industry going and last month, did we do anything with the boards? Let's see. Yeah, we did 42,000 rubles, and our import of wood <laughs> it was 109,000, but that could just be the difference between the timing of, you know, when we when we got all the wood up here and what have you. This isn't, I, this, I'm not recommending this as a practice. I'm not saying do this. What I'm doing is, is demonstrating to you the difference between importing something near the border and then using your own transport to get it into the middle where you need it versus just importing directly into the middle of your republic. So it's definitely worth it um, in most cases to go ahead and do your import close to the border and set up logistics to carry that stuff. Uh, I think, oh no, this is good. Let's see, coal, a power, what's that? Oh, our coal mine is on fire, but we've got a fire truck headed up there, so no problem. Okay, so um, what, what do we want to do this time? All right, oh, the other thing I wanted to show you is that our crops now are working nicely. Um, we've got them emptied out again, but I actually have, I think I have a train exporting crops, which I uh, might get rid of it. It might might be a little too ambitious. Oh, that's a that's that's bricks going for export. There's our boards being exported. Oh my, where are we? That one is going to the food and alcohol, and this one, this one, yes, this, this train right here is actually exporting um, crops, because I, at one point, had this completely full, and I, I was actually had too many crops, which is a great problem to have, but I think what I want to do here, I'm, bear with me, I'm going to let this thing run, I'm going to let this go off, export those crops, because I don't want to lose them, and it, or maybe I could just set it to unload, go here, unload everything you have don't load let's just see if we we'll, if it'll reverse itself no it won't but i'm gonna let goodness 
All right, I'm gonna have it go. Yeah, it'll go. It'll go to. Sorry, it'll go to the custom house and unload and sell. And once it does, I'm gonna follow it. And once it once it's finished, I'm gonna sell it off. And then we'll get into to this this episode because we're gonna go out now and build the downtown for our new coal uh, business that we're setting up out there near, near Ironton. And uh, I know at the last one I said I was actually going to uh, do that off camera and then come back and show you how to set up the uh, coal processing. But what I decided it'd be a good idea to show you the uh, setting up the town because I think that this particular town's gonna be uh, a little more on the complex side. And yeah, let's sell him off. Okay, bye-bye. All right, so um, you can see our money's in pretty good shape. I do have a problem though that I'm curious about. I have two things to talk about in this episode that I'm curious about. Oh, oh, and I forgot to show you. Look at, check this out. Look at our construction. Now that we've figured out the deal, uh, James Quell kind of gave us the uh, magic bullet with the build your own uh, paths. And um, now our construction is actually working. And look at our, and this is a big one to build. The uh, radio station is a huge building. It takes a lot of work. And we're very close to having it finished and we built all these flats and by the way when I set them up I turned off the recruiting so that there wouldn't be anybody here because that way I could go ahead and build these and not worry about them having people in here that would eventually just leave because they didn't have what they needed so uh, so now we've got uh, we have built a cinema we built a new shopping center we built a pub which actually is running because there happens to be people living here close enough to go man it and they can go down there and have a drink. So uh, the pub is up and running, and it'll be full-time running once we uh, staff these buildings. We've built a uh, playground there, a couple playgrounds up there. Uh, we've built all this road around here. Uh, our construction is actually working. This is nice, <laughs> impressive. And so, um, so we're getting there, we're getting there. We're, maybe we'll start using the construction more. So when this finishes, uh, the next thing to do, well, then we'll bring in our people and get this uh, radio station set the way we want it to maximize the happiness of our people or productivity or education or whatever it is we want. Okay, so uh, that's cool. That actually, that's very cool. Now, the other thing I want to talk about, I meant to do it on the last episode and just forgot. The residence halls in the university. So our university has, we've had, filter, you know, put a, quite a few people through here. And we uh, have a lot of professors now. I think they're graduates of, the, of this university, actually, who are stayed here to teach. And we've got it nice and staffed. Everything's great. But these guys here, the way the dorms seem to work is you go out here to some place and you say, okay, this flat has 65 workers in it, so I am going to relocate up to 10 citizens to a residential building. You select, so you could literally take these people and move them up here if you wanted to get more people in your refinery or whatever. But in the case of the university, we can say, okay, why don't you go into the, uh, the residence hall? So I just clicked it like four times, moved a bunch of people there. So now this residence hall had zero. Now it's got uh, 37, so I moved 37 people in there. And what it's moving are any people who are single, have an education level of one, but not two, so they're somewhere in the ones, so they have a basic education, that's a level one, 1.0 is basic education, they've gone to a school and graduated or they started with an education, and, uh, but they can't have any children, so, so it's single people with an le education level of one, they become students and these people will go to school here in the university. And we could take another another uh, prefab that we want to move people from if we wanted to fill up that thing. And we could go relocate. Do, do, three, four, five. So it got five. Let's see, probably filled it up. Yep, so that one's filled up. So let's see if we can get some more out of this one and put them in this one. Nope, we're done with that one. So we got him down to 28. Ah, uh, boy. Okay, so well, this is going to lead to my second problem. So uh, now we've got a full dorm uh, or a residence hall and we need to put some people in that other one. 
if we want to keep our education going and keep people going to college. So let's go ahead and move some more people. And there's nobody. See, this says the, the hostel only houses adult citizens without children and with basic education. There are no such citizens in that building. So this building doesn't have anybody else we can put in there. Okay. So we could grab another building or whatever. We could keep doing this. This is awful lot of micromanagement. But here we go. There we got a bunch of people out of that one. Kind of stripped it down with people, and let's grab one more and see if we can't fill this puppy up. Okay, so now we've got two full residence halls, and and the number of students here will, will start to grow because all these people here now, see here we go, they're starting to come to class. Now we've got a lot of people going to university. Now, as they graduate, I have watched them, as they graduate, and when they hit level two through going to the school to the university, they will move out and move somewhere else. Now, where they move, I don't know exactly. I don't know what the criteria is or how that works, but they will move back into the other flats. And they seem to move close by a lot because, uh, you know, we tend to keep a lot of people right here and we have a lot of, we, I haven't recruited professors, but I keep getting more and more of them, which nothing wrong with that. But um, so that's how you put people in there and they'll move out on their own. But what they won't do is move in on their own. So you can't set this to say, OK, whenever you have openings, bring some more people in. I personally would like that. I'd like that to be a setting where I could go to a residence hall, click a button and say, automatically recruit, you know, keep automatically full or keep half full or whatever. That would be nice to keep your your uh, university going. But the other thing I noticed was, if you notice here, we only got 152 people in our refinery. And remember, we worked very, very hard to get that where we were getting 450, 500 people in that refinery all the time, for at least 400. And even though some of these uh, still have pretty good number of people in them, and I've gone out actually and recruited some more immigrants to put some people in there, we're still not getting very many people in here. Now, part of that, I think, is if we look at our mix of people, do we have a lot of, we have a lot of babies, a lot of, of students, a lot of uh, people who are in that kind of going to school age. And, um, and we still have 12,000 people without education, which is kind of amazing to me with all the schools that we have scattered around. So we've got some opportunities to improve. Uh, here we go. There are no teachers. So what would be great, <laughs> one thing that would be great is if these people, when they graduated from university, they would tend to go to houses near our schools and houses near our hospitals where we have to have uh, university grads. That would be a nice thing, but I don't see that it does that. As far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to do that. Um, so now we could watch this, and then if we look over here, students with completed studies, if there happened to be somebody here who hasn't moved out but has completed their studies, we could take those people and move them, see, uh, people with a college degree, we could move them over into houses over in here and, and help staff that school, which clearly needs some more, some help. So I'm just going to go out and get them some college grads. Okay, so um, I, guess, I guess what I'm saying is that's the mechanic for how you put these people in the school, in the school system to go to university, but it's very tedious. And it seems to strip out your workforce. You do pay a price for it. You're stripping your workforce to get these people in university. And they don't seem to go back and contribute much. And if you'll notice another effect of this, look, check this out. We have three, we have a full tanker right here, a full tr uh, train of oil. And we have these two are in the process of unloading, but they are still have a tremendous amount of oil in them. And we've got all three of these full. There's 2,700 tons of oil right there. And this is full. So we are full of oil. We're not importing any oil. That's beautiful. That's, that's great. But I would say we're not making as much money as we could be because we're not producing. 
we're not taking advantage of that and supplying enough people into the refinery. And we would have to go through this process of hiring more and more people into our refinery. And you can see our happiness is, is quite good. Uh, it's near perfect, not quite. Our productivity is excellent, which again, I'm not exactly sure how that's calculated. We need to figure that out. But we have, we have very happy people. We have high productivity. Uh, we're getting a lot, of, a lot of university grads. We've got a lot of good things going on, yet I'm not seeing enough people showing up to work here to, to make us the money we should be making off of that investment we had for the refinery and all those oil fields and all those trains and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, so need to figure that one out. Need to figure that one out. But um, still, going well. It's going well. We've got some decent money. We've got about 5 million rubles now in the bank. And again, this question mark here should not be here. That's an improvement opportunity. This guy is, I'm telling him to unload. Oh, wait. Could I be wrong? Could I be wrong? Does he have, no, he has a little bit of fuel left. Now, when a, the next vehicle that comes in there and buys fuel, he will uh, take that two-tenths of a ton, put it in this gas station, and then he will go off and, and he'll be fine. He'll reroute himself and find, find the refinery and go do what he was supposed to be doing. So um, that question mark should not be there. It pops up all the time, and I've checked them multiple times, and they definitely should not be there. All right, <laughs> okay, tons of talk again, but um, eh, looking, looking better, looking better. We've got, we're slowly, slowly heading toward a reasonable looking rail, rail system. It's, it's, it's still got a long ways to go before I would be proud of it or, or happy with it, but it's getting there, it's getting there. And our crop system is working beautifully and we're not uh, importing a lot of crops. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, and I did make that change I discussed. I did set up this um, coal ore processing plant so that it has a storage to go to, and it also feeds this uh, coal plant, and then this storage fill feeds this plant. And now if we wanted to add another power plant, we've already got uh, some buildings um, uh, planned out for them. We could add another power plant, run it off of that um, storage right there, and have no problem giving it coal. And you know, this is you can see this is full. So we're actually really, really do need more coal ore processing here to take advantage of the fact that this mine up here, even at only 31 uh, percent, and even right there with just a few workers, can definitely keep pace with all of this that we need for the power. So uh, this is going to be the area where we can just add more power very easily. Uh, that's probably, well, it'll probably just stay that way and just keep on adding power. And again, look at this oil. Look at, look at this. This is coming from our oil fields. We've got all those are full. These are getting there from the Kaizena oil field. So we're actually at a point where we're kind of, losing opportunity because we're not using all the oil that we have so uh, you know uh, I hate to just go in here and buy more immigrants and one of the things we could do is get some dollars so that we could get some cheaper immigrants because if we look at this um, Soviet bloc is going to cost us 21,000 rubles per 10 and it won't <clears throat> I wish it would at least show you what the price. We can't. I can't see the price, but I promise you, these Im third world immigrants that you pay dollars for are way less money. So if we wanted to, we could convert some of our rubles to dollars. That's not hard to do. Cost us a little bit of an investment. Do we want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's just bring in some immigrants, um, third world immigrants. Um, just to get some more people in here. Now, now, when you bring in third world immigrants, you get a mixture of unhealthy and uneducated people, basically. And so that's okay, because we've got a nice hospital here that's nowhere near its capacity. So we could, we could uh, give these people plenty of food and clothing and, and health care and bring them up to snuff on their health, and we can educate them. We've got a education system going here, even though it's overcrowded, and we need more teachers. Right, give them some more teachers. There we go. 
so we could we could bring some more immigrants in and and do it like that. But uh, I, I mentioned converting rubles to dollars. Well, um, there are no banks in this game, but there's about the next best thing. What we're looking for here is a corner of the map where the eastern block and the western block are the two sides. And here we are. Here's one. And there's power here in Bereslav for the western block. And we would like the closest eastern block power. Uh, that would be Molna. And you'll notice here in Molna, I've actually put in a, temp, a temporary. Uh, I, I set this up to, t to import some uh, power from at Molna and just set up a, a little connection into our rail line because we were having tr was having troubles keeping up with the power demands of I've got all these trains running on elect electrified uh, track now all these electric locomotives and uh, for a while there, I was having trouble keeping up with the power so it kind of begs the the question of why aren't you going over and building another power plant over in your power area and we will we that's a, we will do that but uh, just to show you how to convert some dollars if we were to take hmm, hmm. Well, let's not do Molna because we're using that for something else let's take Bereslav well no we got we almost have to if we're gonna take Bereslav sorry all right, so let's go down here to this little setup and change it a little bit and put in a switch. Like that. Kill those lines, run the power to the switch. And then run power. Oh boy, how could I have made that more clumsy? I, I'm not. Don't think I could have. Let's try this again. Okay, I need to come out of here and go to the switch. So I need that switch to be as far back this way as as, it, as allowed. And probably down this way a little bit so that that coming out of the mola can curve a bit. All right, let's see if this will work. And let's just pay for it. Okay, so we'll run a line. Like that, and then one run one like that. Okay, and then we're going to run a high voltage line from here to Bereslav. We need to go around that water. So let's go. Down. Put that build out. And then continue it. To Bereslav. Okay, so now for us to get um, to convert our rubles to dollars, now imagine this line was connected to our power grid. We could obviously export power. But what we're going to do instead is we'll continue importing from Mola, which we were doing anyway. And let's go up here to Bereslav, and we're going to turn on 
exports. And now see our dollar is just flying up. So we are importing power from one, the Eastern Bloc and exporting it to the Western Bloc. Are we making money? No, we're losing money. But I just wanted to get some dollars. So let's just let that run until we have, I don't know. And we'll let, we'll let it run until we have maybe... Do I even care? Uh, we'll just we'll just let it run for a while, and and when it, when we have enough dollars, we can just all we have to do is turn off the export, and it's kind of like having a currency exchange. Okay, so we we're exchanging some currency. We'll let that run for a bit, and um, then we're going to go build out our uh, um, our town right here and our downtown right down here. So one good thing I learned is that I, as I was doing all that railroad construction, eh, I take that back, never mind. It did build my railroad down here, which I didn't really want. So one thing we want to do here is, is figure out how we want this town to look. First of all, this I don't want this so close to the track. This is our main freight line. This is the coming from Ironton. This is coming up this way to deliver iron over to our right over here. This is the line coming from the depot that comes up and brings trains into the system. It's also our main um, electrified track that the oil is going back from Mona's over here and down this way is the, um, the, the oil line going down into our uh, oil distribution center. So yeah, here comes a here comes a train full of iron right there. Worth, yep. Okay. So, um, I don't want it too close, and I want, to, I want it to be a, a very useful town, and I want it to be centered around um, a large train station. So, this is too close to the track, so, so what, I'm, what I'm going to do here, it's a shame, but we're going to, well, deleting this is no matter, we haven't built it yet, but I am going to destroy some of this track. In fact, I'm just going to delete it. And we will redo the track and we'll get that uh, road going back as well. All right, so uh, I missed that. Well, I'm glad we had firefighters because I missed that message altogether. Okay. All right, so let's let's plan out our city. What we want to have to start with, we want your basic downtown with shopping center, cinema, pub, some playgrounds, kind of a little park area. And in this case, if, if you recall from the last one, or even if you don't, we didn't put any schools up here, and we're not going to put any schools down here in our coal or processing area. So we're going to build a... a a place where the students come in by train as well. So what we want to end up with is sort of a, a, a big downtown with, with an area for shopping and maybe the opposite side for um, school. So, so, and when I say that, I mean opposite side of the train. So the train's going to deliver you in and you're either going to get out and go to school one way or you're going to go out the other way and go downtown to go shopping. And then we'll have the houses built behind the two sections to staff those buildings. So let's think about that. How would that work? I want to let that run while we're going. I think I want to let that the dollars go up to about a hundred thousand. And and in the case some of you are thinking, oh, you're making money. You're making no, we're not. Uh, selling price at four eighty nine. Let's just let's just run the test. Uh, this can, we can talk about currency exchange because I think people are confused about this and they think they're making money by exporting. Yeah. All right, so we are exporting at four eighty nine, four dollars and eighty nine cents, and we are importing 
Now, now we could we could be literally selling this, of course, and then of course you would be making money. But let's go back over here to Mona, which is over here on the border, and see what we're paying for that import of the. Of, oops, wrong one. Okay, we are paying 338 in rubles. So you think, oh wait, look, you're making like a buck and a half. No, of course we're not. And here's why. Because if you think of the value of the dollars and the value of the uh, rubles, let's just take anything. Let's build a, a, a train depot. Notice it says, if we auto build from rubles, it costs 65,000 rubles. Now, if we auto build from dollars, it costs $92,000. So your dollars and your rubles, the ruble is actually the stronger currency. A ruble is worth, worth multiple dollars. Because obviously here, in this case, um, uh, let me go back to rubles. 65,000 rubles are worth $92,000. So, uh, you know, that's like a 50% change. So we're not making that big a markup on this. So we're actually losing money by doing this currency exchange. I'm just doing it as, to show you a way to do it if you really wanted to get some dollars. Or if you want to go out and buy the American harvesters, which I think I've heard multiple people say are, are better harvesters, you could, you, this would be a quick way to get some money. But don't forget, we spent a ton of money on... Uh, setting up that power line and we're going to keep that power line because it may come in handy later anyway so let's just like i said we'll keep that running we'll keep losing some money until we have a hundred thousand dollars and then we'll go get some immigrants all right back to our back to work back to work okay there's our there's the area we're working in okay so and you know what i am going to pause it only because we got five million Rubles and we are in twenty nine thousand dollars, and we don't need to get to. We don't need to run out the clock while we're while we're thinking about this stuff. So let me let me smooth out what we've got here. At, 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 turn that off, and we're going to need another excavator. We're going to need another uh, construction, and in fact, what do y'all think? Do you want to? use construction to build this? I can hear you saying yes. I mean, I really can't hear you saying yes. I can hear myself saying, no, of course not. It's too slow. But I really can hear you saying yes. Oh, how could we get asphalt? See, we're not set up yet to be able to move goods all over the place. So by that, I mean, we can't go over to our Give us some, give me some quick ways to move around, but we can't go over here to our original area where we built that construction area with the asphalt and the cement and concrete and all that. We can't, we're not ready to try to move that way out here to do a build. In fact, one could argue, why are we way out here doing a build in the first place? So, I don't think we, I think we have a storage now for cement, so that's cool. We can get cement, but we can't store asphalt. No, we don't have any way of storing asphalt. So we would need an asphalt plant <laughs> in order to be able to even import our asphalt. And, hmm. The other thing we could do, of course, is go over here to Molna and set up a little import center and import the stuff that we wanted and run it by train. Well, that'd be a lot of work. Run it by train all the way over here to this new area where we want to build. And we can set up uh, storage and train unloading. And... Um, set up this massive construction all right so <laughs> kind of abruptly we're going to move to uh, way up to 1975 now why is that because as i was making this video the one you're watching now 
I realized that, you know, everybody's going to want to do construction in here. So this is going to be our, our coal production and our coal ore processing. Eventually there'll be a steel mill over here somewhere. We we'll have a downtown area either here or here. I'm not sure exactly what we'll have to work that out. But I, I knew everybody would want to do construction, and I, and I do too. I mean, it's cool, and I wanted to just kind of uh, start getting into the real complexity of the game because if we play it as just a kind of a tycoon game, it's a right, right. it's got its challenges, but it's not that hard of a game. It can be handled. And I wanted to get into the more complex logistics where you've got stuff way over here in a, near a border and you want to move it into the in, inner part of your republic and you want to, you know, move construction materials and do construction in the middle of your republic and whatever. So <clears throat> I thought, well, okay, a good first step would be to go out and take our existing line. So this line right here that runs back to uh, the Kaizena oil uh, exchange, right? Then we've got a Kaizena oil field and we've got that oil from the Molna oil field that was running back to it. A lot of this line was single track. In fact, this right through here was single track. So I went through and double tracked it all. I thought, well, how, you know, that's as simple as it can be. I just, you know, ran double track up through, through here. This part was probably already double track, I believe. But double track this stuff back up through here except for the tunnel and the bridge, I left those single, and set all this up so that um, we could have double track, and that would open up the possibility of moving more trains along this double track to haul other stuff. And I thought, well, what a simple change, that'll be easy. Well, as soon as I did it, the whole system died. The trains would not run at all. And it was just the weirdest thing because these trains here coming out of Ironton, hauling our iron over to Molna for export, would run just fine. So all of this track worked perfectly. And then I couldn't get the, the oil trains from Molna to go to Kaizena. They just would not go. And <clears throat> so I, I started testing. I mean, I actually went through and got down here at ground level and went through this and looked at every single signal and every piece of track to make sure that, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a gap in the track, make sure I didn't have a signal turned the wrong way, double checked it, couldn't find anything. Finally, went ahead and started running tests. So I actually set up a station right here that intersected with that new double track line and then ran a station let's see i think the first test i did i ran it all the way over to here because i wanted to see okay does this piece of track work it did it worked fine i could run a train from that station i showed you up there to this station over here no problem okay so all that track works right so then i w went down here and i said well i don't get this because these these iron trains are running through all of this track, so it must be down here. So I put in a station right here. You can kind of see where I've killed it now, but I put in a station here and ran tests, and then all of a sudden, it wouldn't work. And three hours later, after going over this track with a fine-tooth comb about five times and looking at everything I could find, I finally went to right here, and took out these two pieces of track and put them back in. Now, here's what's crazy is, if you think about it, those, that, those, that track right there had to be correct and had to be working. Otherwise, my original test here could have never worked. So I finally, 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 just replaced those piece, two pieces of track even though they look perfectly good and it worked again. So three hours later, and I don't know how many months later, I've had to run off a lot of game time just watching it, trying to test it to figure out what's going on. But now it's working. So um, uh, uh, 
I think our, our train system optimi route optimization still needs some work, but uh, we're get, it, we'll get there. We'll get there. All right, so uh, let me take a this, – this track serves zero purpose, so I'm going to take it out. It was just – it was literally put there to do tests. Oh, and the other thing, uh, if I would go back to, like, the Molina oil field and click on a train when it was confused – and when it when it showed okay take me to the nearest point of where it's having a problem this is this was completely wrong it would actually take me over here to that station to that uh, uh, aggregate loading station where the iron was being loaded which of course works perfectly so that made zero sense and helped not at all. So, so that was very confusing as well. But, but, but any, so uh, please, let's improve uh, how it shows us what our problems are and let's uh, improve the route uh, optimization and the, and the routing. But uh, anyway, opportunities, opportunities. Okay, so what, what we're going to do actually in the next episode, because this one's now getting pretty long, uh, we're going to start planning out um, our downtown and probably our coal ore processing and how we're going to do um, the moving, moving of construction materials into this area so that we can use our construction management tools to uh, build out this uh, neighborhood up here and the downtown and the coal ore processing and the steel mill and all that good stuff and uh, you know we have lots of options there's so many ways you can uh, you know attack this problem but uh, we're going we're going to work on that we're going to work on how do we solve if we decide to come from and i'm going to say it again please give us a way to move around the screen without doing all this all this stuff I'm having to do right now. Uh, if we decide to move the stuff from over here uh, down, uh, we're going to have to overcome the diesel handoff to electric uh, problem as well because we've got electric track. But we do see, I mean, it is nice. We've got uh, a train track that runs, it's actually double track down to about here. We could easily extend that track down and hook into our main freight line down here and it wouldn't even be that much track but getting stuff out of this area right here is not going to be the easiest thing ever done but it could be done so uh we'll look into that see what we can do about that and um and then figure out where do we want our construction materials to come from and how we're going to ship them and all that good stuff and uh, we'll deal with that in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player. And I hope you'll join us for our next Workers and Resources Soviet Republic video. Thank you.